Once we've got the niche worked out, then we've got to get to the systems, the leverage aspect of the business. Remember our definition of a business? A commercial profitable enterprise, that's what the marketing does. Now when we get into this side, it's a commercial profitable enterprise that works, okay? This is where the systems come into the business. We've actually now got to systemize. Why do we want to do systems, by the way, after marketing? Because systems cost money. If you don't have good marketing in place, you're not making enough money to pay for the systems to be developed. And also, you don't have enough volume to really need the systems in place in most cases. So, let's take a little uh, look at systems. Um, when we sit down and take a look at it, most of the time with systems, what we're thinking about is a very simple premise. System stands for, I'll get you all to read it out for me, everyone. Save yourself time, energy, and money. I fell in love with writing systems in a business back when I had a photocopy shop, and I thought, hang on, I'm working too hard. And I started writing systems, started documenting how things could be done, and not in any complex way. It's not like I was doing ISO 9000 or anything. I was just writing down how things should be done. I was taking pictures of how things should look, doing videos of how things should be done, audio taping how things should be said. And hey presto, I started developing systems. And what I really learned is that if you've got systems for things, A, does it take you less time to train someone when it's written down how to do it, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. B, I'd stopped having to say things like if you want the job done right, do it yourself. Because other people could do the job right, because guess what? They had a system to do it. It wasn't as complex as that. Now, I wrote a book called Instant Systems. It's one of the 15 books uh, that you'll be able to read through us with Action Coach. What we go through here is how we actually structure that systems in a business. Now, we start here with a vision statement. Where is the business ultimately going? This isn't about your basic goals. This is about the big picture of the business. Where do we want the business to go? Then we write a mission statement, and that really designs how do we actually get there? You know, the vision is the big thing in the future, but the mission tells us this is the road we're going to take to get to the vision. Third thing we want to put on is a culture statement. Now, you can call these a company's core values, the core beliefs, you can call it a culture, whatever it is. But we actually want to write down the rules of the game in our business. We actually want to write down what is our business rules? How do we want to play this game called business? Now, why do we want to do that? Because if we're going to put systems in, we're going to hire great people, we need to have a great system for them to operate within. If you're stuck for what that should look like, jump on our website, actioncoach.com, take a look at our 14 points of culture. You'll start to get an idea as to what we're talking about here. Then we need to set goals, and SMART goals of course, specific, measurable, achievable, results oriented with a time frame. Okay, so SMART goal setting. We want to set goals for our business for the next 90 days, we want to set it for the next year, the next two, three, four, five years. Now a lot of people struggle with setting, setting goals because they don't really know where you're going. First of all though, we start with setting goals at the smallest end. We start with doing it on a daily, weekly, monthly and quarterly basis. Then we can stretch to annual goals, then we can stretch. Too often I see people say, well, you know, you've got to set a five-year goal and then you can work backwards. Well, a lot of businesses struggle to set a five-year goal because, hey, that's a long way off in the future. I really don't know where I'm going to be next week. How the heck do you expect me to know where I'm going to be in five years' time? So then we go through and we say, all right, now we're going to develop an organization chart. What should the org chart look like? When you're going to finish this business, when this business is going to be achieving its vision, what is the organization going to look like? What sort of positions are you going to have in the company? Where is the company going to be and how is it going to look? Developing an organization chart is a lot easier said than done. A lot of people sit down to try and do it and they work out, well, how many people should I have there? Should I have someone in marketing? Should I have, how many salespeople should I have ultimately? So sometimes that takes a bit of coaching to help get through that one. Then we've got to have contracts for each position. Now by the way, I see you're all looking so excited about writing these positional contracts, aren't you? It's not as hard as what you think it is. In fact, it actually gets quite easy once you know what you're doing with this stuff. Developing positional contracts, does that allow your employees to do a better job, yes or no? 
If they know what they're supposed to be doing, how they're supposed to be doing it, and how they're going to be measured and remunerated, the clearer they know their job, the easier it is to do their job and the higher their performance levels are and obviously the higher your profitability is. Then we go to key performance indicators. Every position, every department, every part of the company needs to have some sort of a measurement to say this is how we know when you're doing a good job. This is how we know when you're performing at a high level. We've got to measure those things. Then the how-to part of the system. Notice we haven't got to the how-to's until point nine in this. This is why most companies, when they go to put systems in place, they fail because they haven't done the groundwork to get the systems to work. What's the use of writing a system if someone doesn't know it's their job to do that part of the system? What's the use of having a how-to manual on something if someone doesn't realize where it fits within the organization chart? You know, these are some of the important aspects of writing systems that come first so ultimately we can get to those how-to systems. And then finally we develop management systems. You know, a lot of the time when people want to leave their business, the reason they can't leave is there's no other management in place. If we develop great management systems, great reporting systems, great meetings, great ways of managing our people, ultimately we get a phenomenal job happening through those systems. So finally then we want to get to...